Hello everyone, it's been a while since I've done a screencast, so I thought I'd do one. I've had a couple of inbox messages and Facebook messages and whatnot about um, Isadora and Ableton and how you send MIDI um, to and from the software. I did this tutorial, well it must have been at least three or four years ago, and back then the resolution of the video was really low quality. So basically this is just to replace this video. So uh, I'll try and keep it short, but um, this is not really going to be any more advanced than the other video, just the HD version. So here we go. So I've got Isadora open. Um, I've just hidden um, the toolbox on the left here, so I've got a nice big flat space. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is, um, is MIDI setup. So first of all, I'm going to send some MIDI through into Ableton. So MIDI setup here is in um, communications, it's just off my screen record, but communications is in MIDI setup. And as you'll see, the import, input port and the output port are currently set to none. So first of all, I'm going to set up a virtual port. Now what this means is I haven't got any physical hardware plugged into my computer. This is all virtual. So it's like having a, a, a virtual cable connected to two, di two different bits of software. So I'm going to set this one up. Uh, I haven't installed anything. This is part of Isadora. So I'm going to have a port that has virtual out. Um, in fact, I need to do it in the out. So I'm going to get rid of that. That wasn't a good start. So the output is going to be under the output. That makes sense. Okay. Now I'm going to create a wave generator. Bear with me. A wave generator. There we go. Uh, and then I'm going to send a control. Now there's a few different types of MIDI. Um, there's, there's two basic really. A control which is a variable number, which is 0 to 127. Now, this is things like a slider or an encoder or a dial, something like that. And that means the number always changes. And then you've got, I'm going to create it here, a note, uh, a send note. And this is basically your pitch and your velocity. So this replicates hitting a MIDI keyboard key, like physically pressing a key. Um, and how hard you press that is by the velocity. And you have pitch as well. I'm not going to use the send note just yet. I'm going to send the control. So this is sending a message out of the out of the software. Now Isadora doesn't really know and it doesn't really care whether it's a virtual MIDI or real MIDI if you did have an audio interface um, plugged into your computer. This just sends the message. So there's, you don't have to say, stay inside the computer. You're basically just saying, send this message and the port that you've set up previously will take care of the rest. So I'm sending out on port one, which is right because in MIDI setup, in port one here in the output, we've got this. Now the channel and the controller can be anything. Um, you can have up to 16 channels of MIDI and controllers go up to 127 as well. Now I could pick any of these, but the order starts at one. And this is the value that we're going to send out. So if I link this to this, I am now, I'll slow this down a little bit, but I am now sending out um, a value from 0 to 127. Now this actually goes from 0 to 100, but it already is scaled the min and maximum to 0 to 127. Now this isn't actually sending any message out yet because you have to trigger it as well. So I could manually trigger this. I'm just clicking the mouse on it and that will be sending MIDI information out of Isadora. Now what I often do is connect the value to the trigger as well. So every time this value changes, it's sending MIDI. It's a little bit over the top, but it's not gonna stress your computer out. Um, another way of doing it is just creating the pulse generator and if you set this to about two, you'll see this will be sending a trigger and that will be sending it out like that. In fact, let's keep it that way for a change. So you can do it either way, it's absolutely no problem. One nice way about the pulse generator is you can stop it as well. 
Okay, notice that you now also have this flashing down here that is now flashing at the same tempo as the trigger. This is just a little notification down here to say that it is sending MIDI out. And if you click it, it in fact brings up the MIDI setup. So there's a little shortcut for you. All I did there is click on the MIDI. Okay, so that's that. Now I'm going to switch to A button live. I'm just gonna open this up. I use A button live now. I'm doing this in real time, so the software is booting in front of you now, so just bear with me. Okay, now luckily, I can already see that there's MIDI coming straight into A button by this little indicator flashing. But first of all, I'm just going to check a few things. So in preferences, in MIDI, it's actually, the input is already set to Isadora Virtual Out. Okay, that's pure fluke. <laughs> I must have had this set up last time, just remembered it. But that's all you need to do. It's deciding which port, one to six, and you can select in your drop down list which one you want to select. Now again, if you've got a audio or firewire USB interface plugged in that has physical MIDI inputs, this will show up here as well. But I'm just going to select that. And you can turn them on as well and remote. Uh, I believe you have to have remote on. Uh, if you want to MIDI control things. So I just tend to turn them all on track and remote. Don't worry too much about sync. So the input to Ableton Live is virtual out. Now to do something with this, I'm just gonna, uh, let's get a filter. I've got no audio running here. I've got nothing going in Ableton at all. I'm just setting up the MIDI, okay. The next thing I'm going to do is click on MIDI and anything that shows up blue means it can be MIDI mapped. So I'm going to control this frequency and as soon as I click it, you'll see it's do, it does one slash one. Now that relates to one dash one. Okay. So we know that that's right. And it, you can also scale these values here in A button, but that, that's another, that's another thing altogether. And I'm just going to unclick that and it should just take a few seconds to pick up and now you'll see the auto, auto filter is jumping up and down. Now the reason that it's jumping in that kind of it's, I'm just trying to clip my fingers to replicate why that's jumping and it's not super smooth. If we go back to Isadora that's to do with those trigger pulses. This is why I sometimes just use this because then it sends out sends out a lot of triggers very quickly and now you'll see it's a lot smoother in Ableton. So that is working. That's how you set it up. That is how you would send MIDI from Isadora into Ableton Live. If you click the MIDI tab at the top here, you can change the minimum and the maximum of how much you want this to move. Um, so say you don't want to cut off a lot of the audio at the top it'll only move a certain amount and it'll rescale. So now it doesn't go quite as far. You could do this in Isadora as well, but it's easy to do it in the Ableton software, I believe. Okay, so that is how you send virtual MIDI out of Isadora into Ableton Live using controller values.